In segments number one and two, you learned why to do CEAs and how to compare net costs to health outcomes, especially Disability Adjusted Life Years, or DALIs, and Quality Adjusted Life Years, or QALIs. In this segment, number three, we dive deep into DALIs to understand how they're calculated and used. We also consider their close cousins the QALIs. We'll start with a nice video. Let's cue up The DALI Show. Picture this. You're the Director of Chronic Disease Control in the Ministry of Health, you're meeting with your fellow directors discussing health programs when the Minister of Health bursts in and announces that the ministry has just been offered $100 million in additional funds. You think, so many of my programs could benefit from that kind of money. However, there is a catch. The money will be given only to disease intervention strategies which demonstrably offer high value for money, or bang for the buck. That is, the greatest health benefits for the most people with the available funds. And of course, there are other agencies within the ministry competing for this funding. The minister proposes that you focus on diabetes, a great cause, you think. As the director of chronic disease control, you know full well just how much diabetes affects people's lives. But how do you make that argument in a way that others will understand? How do you demonstrate to the donor that diabetes compromises the health of many people in important ways, as much as a disease like, say, AIDS, after all, they're different in just about every aspect. Populations affected, physiology, rates and types of complications, mortality risks, not to mention strategies to prevent and treat. Furthermore, how do you show that your diabetes intervention strategies and programs offer health benefits similar to or more than those of the competition? It's like comparing pineapples, bananas, and broccoli. Wouldn't it be great if there were a single tool to combine the negative effects of early death and morbidity on well-being? That is, one number to portray the full burden imposed by a disease, a universally recognized and respected method to comprehensively quantify disease burden for a specific disease. Thankfully, there is. It's called a DALI, and it's exactly what you need. In technical jargon, it's a common metric that solves the pineapple, banana, broccoli, non-comparability problem. DALIs allow direct comparison of the burden of different diseases. They also allow summing burden across diseases. They permit comparing treated and untreated disease. They even make it possible to compare different types of interventions, such as treatment expansion versus prevention campaigns. DALI stands for Disability Adjusted Life Years. Simply put, a DALI is a standardized, quantitative measure of the burden of disease. It combines mortality, the years of life lost due to premature death, with morbidity, a measure of all non-fatal clinical effects such as illness episodes or chronic disability. Mortality is easy to quantify. It's simply the life expectancy of a healthy individual at the time he or she becomes ill, minus the age at death of an individual with the disease being studied. Think of this as the LY in DALI, or life years lost due to disease. Morbidity is a bit more complicated to calculate. First, each illness effect is given a severity rating called a disability weight, ranging from zero, which means fully healthy, to 0 0.3, which is common for long-term chronic illnesses, to one, which means 100% disabled. Next, because effects can be short or long-term, the duration of the morbidity is factored in. Think of this as the DA in DALI, or disability adjustment due to morbidity. When both mortality and morbidity contributions are added together, you have a full DALI score. Let's look at an example using adult onset diabetes. Let's say an individual dies at 60 years old instead of his life expectancy without diabetes of 75 years. That's 75 minus 60, so 15 DALIs incurred. That's the mortality part of the DALI. Let's also say that the morbidity effects of adult onset diabetes perhaps foot or kidney complications, rendered this individual 50% disabled for the final 10 years of his life. That's the disability weight. So 0 0.5 times 10 for 10 years results in five more DALIs incurred. In sum, for this individual, the overall disease burden due to diabetes can be represented as 20 DALIs, 15 for mortality plus five for morbidity. Usually, we adjust DALI estimates for timing, meaning we treat future events as having less value from today's perspective because we aren't as concerned with the future as we are with the present. This adjustment is known as discounting. 
Keep it in mind because it can significantly reduce the DALI burden of early mortality. For now, we'll stick to exploring undiscounted DALIs. And what if a diabetes care intervention extended life by five years and reduced the duration of disability from 10 years to four? Then the LY, the life years lost, would be 10 instead of 15. The DA, the disability adjustment, would be two instead of five. Add it up, that yields 12 DALIs instead of 20. This means, using the standard terminology, we've averted eight DALIs through this intervention. That is the health benefit of the intervention. DALIs were invented 30 years ago to combine separate data on disease mortality and morbidity being recorded by the World Health Organization. It complements another common metric already in use at the time, known as QALIs, or Quality Adjusted Life Years. DALIs and QALIs both incorporate disease-related reductions in length of life and the negative effects of morbidity, but they consider the matter from opposite perspectives. QALIs quantify health, so bigger values are better, while DALIs quantify disease burden and thus, smaller DALI values are better. Health programs try to avert DALIs. Other than their opposite sign, DALIs and QALIs are almost equivalent. Since their introduction, DALIs have become the accepted way to quantify global disease burden, allowing observers to compare and evaluate disease data as grouped by country and region, age and gender, type of disease, and more. For example, here you can see the distribution of DALIs by disease and age. In newborns, most DALIs are due to neonatal disorders. For one-month-olds, diarrhea, lower respiratory illness, and other common infectious diseases cause the greatest burden. Diabetes extracts a steady toll starting in the 20s. Cardiovascular disease takes off quickly from age 30. Similarly, in this graph, you can see how disease burden varies by geographic region. On the left are wealthier countries, with the largest burden from cardiovascular disease and cancer, and secondarily from musculoskeletal disorders, diabetes, and mental disorders. On the far right are African regions, with the highest burden from HIV, diarrhea, and respiratory infection, tropical diseases, and neonatal disorders. You can find even more DALI-based graphics in a special December 2012 issue of Lancet and online at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation website. Let's return to your immediate dilemma. Using DALIs, you can now provide your boss, the Minister of Health, with exactly the kind of estimates and information the donor wants to see. You can quantify the burden of diabetes and compare that to the burden of other diseases, such as AIDS. Granted, you still need to collect data on such items as the number of people who have diabetes, how much their lives are shortened on average, and how much disability they suffer. You also have to gather the same data for individuals with HIV infection in order to make these DALI comparisons. The good news is that the necessary information is all generally available through clinical surveys, epidemiologic studies, and global burden of disease tables. You can even use DALIs to tackle the minister's other challenge, quantifying and comparing different intervention programs to address diabetes. You could calculate the number of DALIs a particular diabetes treatment program averts, perhaps by extending life or reducing the length or severity of morbidity. You can then compare that result with the number of DALIs averted by another program, perhaps focused on diabetes prevention through nutritional counseling. Then, by factoring in the potential $100 million in new funds and the coverage which those funds allow for each intervention program, you can extend your analysis into a basic cost-effectiveness analysis. Completing this analysis will take some effort and practice, but it's simple conceptually. You're lowering the DALI burden and comparing which options offer the biggest health-improving bang for the buck. That's what the donor wants. DALIs are a big part of global health planning and evaluation. They offer a logical and flexible way to compare disease burden due to both mortality and morbidity from different diseases, across populations, and with and without interventions. With the DALI concept under your belt, you can understand and contribute to global health policy discussions. So, go forth and use DALIs in good health. So, now I'm going to say more about an issue only briefly mentioned in the video. That is, how we quantify morbidity, the disability weights used in DALIs, and the utilities used in QALIs. The disability weight is how much people are disabled by their illness. The utility is how good they feel. Both are on a scale of 0 to 1. So a disability weight of 0 means no disability or fully healthy. Conversely, a utility of 1 means healthy. 
So both present the relative severity of different diseases, disease stages, and disease events. You can compare how sick people are across diseases, whether you're using disability weights or utilities. Having a limp and walking a little slower doesn't result in a big disability. Having chronic severe pain has a big disability. With disability weights or utilities, you can compare different diseases and problems. Both measures are also useful to compare how well an intervention works in terms of improving health. So if someone has a severe pain and one intervention reduces half of that pain and another intervention gets rid of the limp completely, it may turn out that reducing the pain by half is more valuable than get, getting rid of the limp entirely because the limp didn't have such a bad effect on overall health. However, there are some key differences between disability weights and utilities. Disability weights have the advantage of being derived from one process that was organized by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Disability weights for several hundred diseases and health states have been estimated and are publicly available. When everyone is using the same numbers, it tends to foster standardization and facilitates comparison across diseases, interventions, and studies. That's the plus side of disability weights. The plus side of utilities and qualities is that there are far more measurements of it in the scientific literature. Many people have measured utilities. The downside is that they've used different methods, standard gamble, time trade-off, and visual analog scale, and indirect measures too. They've also used different respondent groups, both with and without disease, which may have different perspectives. The measurement methods don't always agree with each other. Because the measurement values are different, you may wind up with different utility values. This is best handled with sensitivity analyses. So you have a tricky choice when quantifying morbidity and cost-effectiveness analysis. If you're going to use DALIs, you use disability weights, and if you're going to use qualities, you use utilities. The best place to go for standard disability weights is a paper published in the special issue of Lancet on the global burden of disease in late 2012. The first author for this article is Joshua Solomon. That pretty much wraps it up for DALIs and qualities. Do you agree that they're uber? Feel free to watch this again. Most people need several iterations of these metrics to really understand them. In the next video segment, we'll see how CEA results can be presented. Music